Welcome to another episode of Racing to Learn. We are a nonprofit that uses radio control to get kids excited about math and science. And today we are taking another look at our ECX Ruckus. This is a truck that we're going to be building from the ground up here. Uh, we're going to call it the Ultimate Ruckus and basically incorporate all that we've learned after driving the Ruckus for the last. Uh, you know, three plus years, right? It's it's proven to be a very durable platform, um, so much so that uh, that's the the truck that we recommend to uh, to folks trying to get into radio control, uh, just because it is just so durable. Uh, there's a couple of things that need to be addressed, like the drive shafts are, um, you know, are a little bit notorious for breaking the plastic drive shafts, um, and um, amongst other things, you know, we we're going to build be building this ruckus. Uh, to go all out, right? So just uh, incorporating all of our learnings to build this brushless powered two-wheel drive, one-tenth scale ruckus. And I'm gonna address the, the steering today. So we, we did throw in a, a Savox. Uh, this is a um, this is a 0231 MG, uh, so metal geared Savox servo that we had laying around. Uh, the, the stock servo is uh, you know, is is to be expected for a ready to run car. It's not the best quality. Um, another thing we need to address here is the the servo saver. So this was actually a roller that we bought off of uh, eBay. Um, this is actually a torment. Uh, the the two trucks are are pretty much identical except for the bumpers. The the torment has a, a bigger bumper, which is nice. Right? It gives it a little extra protection, especially when kids are driving this. Um, and the, the wheels are smaller. Uh, the the uh, Torment is a short course truck with uh, smaller uh, wheels and tires versus the Ruckus has larger monster truck tires. So we are going to go ahead and attach the servo. We, in, we installed the servo. We're going to take apart the bottom of this here. So this... Um, this kind of bottom support... The chassis just comes out with these four screws, and that's going to give us access to the servo saver and the crank of the servo. All right, so I'm just keeping those screws in line here. So. With those four screws removed, we can just pop this out and uh, access the bottom of the truck here. So just a couple things to note, you know, the, the servo mounts with screws from the top, but uh, to attach the actual servo horn, we've got to take off that, that brace here and then install this. And actually I should probably power up the servo just to center it uh, before I, I mount this down. Um, another point of criticism for the Ruckus is the servo saver. It uh, it has a lot of a lot of play, and also when you when you um, when you go in reverse, the the steering kind of wobbles back and forth. Um, so RPM does make an upgraded version. Another common fix is to just take a tie wrap like this and wrap it around the um, the crank of the servo. So. Um, not sure we can't really get a good video of this uh, of the servo saver in action, but the servo saver is aptly named because it um, you know it absorbs some of the shock when you when when the you hit something uh, that that uh, will move the steering very fast, right? So instead of transmitting all that force to the servo itself and the gears, uh, the servo saver uh, absorbs a lot of that shock. But if there's too much play in it. Uh, the you, you sacrifice uh, accuracy in the handling right in the steering of the the truck so um, some folks will uh, replace it with rpm which is which is actually removes the servo saver uh, entirely it's it's it eliminates the servo saver um, so folks will run a metal geared servo like this uh, and then also sometimes that you still feel like you need a servo saver because metal, uh, you know, metal geared servo will will take the brunt of those forces fairly well. But um, you know, you're you're subjecting it to that force over time, which will wear out the servo faster. So it's uh, we think it's still a good idea to run a servo saver in a in a um, you know bashing type truck like this. Uh, folks have used the a team associated t4 slash or you know t4 or b4 servo saver and the servo saver out of those two vehicles 
uh, is has been known to fit. We haven't done it personally, but read that on the forums. Um, we're, with this truck, we're gonna just go ahead and uh, do the tie wrap trick. So um, what we wanna do here, and I'm just gonna get it on the camera here, is wrap this tie wrap around the bell crank of the servo saver. So you'll want to use you know, kind of a smaller tie wrap. And I'm gonna leave the tail of the tie wrap hanging out here. So you know, it does take some finessing to get that in. Um, what I'll do is I'll leave the tail of the tie wrap hanging out. So, you know, we can make it a little bit tighter if the tie wrap stretches over time or whatnot. So I'm just gonna loop this around. And sometimes you, you know, you'll notice that, uh, let me grab the other chassis that we have here. Because, uh, see you'll notice on this other ruckus chassis that there's actually a metal band here around that crank of the servo saver, right? And it's got a gap in it that, that serves as a spring that, that uh, has some tension um, you know, holding, you know, giving that, that service saver a little bit more support. Um, ours was a roller that we bought off of eBay and didn't come with that. So not sure if it was an older version that didn't have that or if it just, you know, popped off, got lost or whatnot. But uh, even more of a reason to do this, um, this zip tie modification. So I'm just going to tighten this down. And we'll leave the tail of the zip tie kind of facing out just in case we need to access that. I'm just going to make sure we have enough clearance with the brace in place. So just going to work the servo through its whole range of motion. Looks like it does. All right. So just in case we do need to make it tighter, we can kind of yank on that tie wrap a little. I'll, I'll leave a little bit on there uh, when we cut it. So we can access that. All right. Just gonna grab some, some cutters. Uh, grab some cutters. And again, just leaving a little bit on there just in case we need to tighten it later that should be sufficient so there's the finished modification pretty simple I right, just put a tie wrap around there and uh, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the electronics here so that we can get the servo centered you always want to center the servo before you put this on uh, because if you put it on and the servo is not centered you may not have enough range of adjustment on the transmitter to compensate uh, to make the wheels straight, right? So you, you definitely want to center that servo before uh, mounting the servo horn here. So let us know if you guys like these videos. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks again for watching.